I'm gonna show you how to beat the overpowered Kagan Press tactics. We'll look at the tactic's strengths, its weaknesses, and some example tactics that you can use to break it down. My name is Coach Rohan of the Coach Rohan YouTube channel, and let's get right into it. The biggest strength of a Gengen Press tactic is to focus on quickly winning the ball back in the opposition's half. By using a very high line and constant pressure, the target of a Gengen Press is to win the ball as close to the opposition goal as possible. This then limits their distance to get into scoring positions, making it easier to get high value chances compared to building up play all the way from the back. Secondly, the Gengen Press looks to put immediate pressure on the opposition once they lose possession, using multiple players to hunt down the player that just recovered the ball. This will give the opposition no time to think or look around for a teammate, essentially making it impossible to slowly build up play. Not only that, a Gengen Press can be adapted to intelligently focus on the weakest link in the defense. They constantly try and overwhelm the player who's the worst on the ball, inevitably forcing him to make a mistake which could lead to a goal. And the Gengen Press's strengths lie not only in the attack, it's also a good defensive cover-up. Since all that's required for the main defensive focus of a Gengen Press is hard work, stamina and discipline, it's a great alternative for teams that don't have the defensive quality to sit back and create a defensive wall in a low block. But don't worry, there are some weaknesses in the Gengen Press tactic that we can use to break it down. As we've seen, the Gengen Press relies on immediately pushing players up to start the press. And while this makes it difficult to break through the press, once it does get broken, there's a lot of space in behind to take advantage of, making it very vulnerable to direct counterattacks. Furthermore, it's also important to look at who's going to be doing the pressing, as this task often falls to the attackers or midfielders. While they may create a majority in numbers, they won't have the highest defensive intelligence, making it certainly possible to play your way out of the press if you've got players and specifically defenders who are good on the ball. And finally, the Gengen Press is notorious for how demanding it is on its players, both physically and mentally. It's incredibly difficult for a team to keep up the constant pressure and movements required for a Gengen Press for an entire 90 minutes, possibly leading to a drop in quality in the later stages of the match. This is even worse when the opposition is focused on stretching the width of its play, which then increases the distance that a Gengen Pressing player will have to move to put on that constant pressure. Not to give too much away, but that's something that we'll focus on in one of the example tactics to beat a Gengen Press. Now that we know the weaknesses of a Gagan Press, let's look at three example tactics, each one looking to exploit a different weakness of this style of play. This first tactic is specifically for teams who've got some quality on the ball, as it's focused on playing its way through the press. Using two ball playing defenders should give us an off the ball creativity in the defense to play through a press, especially with the three man midfield in front of them. This midfield setup is specifically designed to create plenty of triangle link ups between our players, especially when the wingbacks start to push up a bit more. This should give any player at least two or three options to play the ball to once they get put under pressure, therefore nullifying a lot of the danger of the Gage Press. We're also explicitly not using a playmaker, as we don't want to give the Gage Press a specific player to focus on with their pressure. Further up the field, our inside force will sit more narrow to make them more easy to reach once we get through that press, setting up our attack. And the final important instructions are in possession, where we're going to be playing a high tempo football to make sure that we're not dallying around on the ball, as well as not focusing on shorter passing to enable switching the play from one side to the other. But again, this tactic will only work if you've got some players that are good on the ball. If you don't, here are two more tactics that you can use. Our second tactic looks at exploiting the toll a Gengen Press takes on its players by soaking up pressure and then hitting them with a direct vertical counterattack. The free defensive mids will help to create a solid wall for the Gengen Press to tire itself out against, with two Sukunda Volantes being able to move further forward once we start our counterattack. Because once we do get the ball, we've got a great way to circumvent that whole Gengen Press with a direct ball to our target forward. He'll be able to knock the ball onto his two partners in crimes, the advance forwards who are looking to run into the space that the Gengen Press has left behind. Our out of possession instructions will set us up perfectly for this plan, as our low block combined with dropping off a bit more will help soak up that pressure while giving us enough space to run in into with our counter attack. We'll also be focusing our distribution to our target forward to get up the pitch as quickly as possible, as well as using more direct passing to pass over that whole pressing trap. But that's not the only way to circumvent a Gagan press. Let's look at tactic number three. This tactic looks to make their pressing as difficult as possible by focusing on really stretching the width of our play. It's another counter-attacking system, with our 7-player defense able to soak up intense amounts of pressure. But when we now get the ball back, we're going to be focusing our play down the wings where our wingbacks and inside forwards, who definitely won't be sitting narrow this time, will be able to get into a lot of open space and create some danger. We'll make sure to quickly distribute the ball to our flanks as well as focusing our play down both wings to fully take advantage of any space left behind, as well as making those kick 
and pressing opponents constantly run from one side of the pitch to the other to tire them out. And once they do get tired, you can bet that our attacking trio is looking to get in behind and make them pay. But these are just example tactics. The most important thing is that you now know how a gang and press works and how to break it down. A massive thank you to the manager seat for having me on, and I'll see you on the next video.